Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with me. Today, we are in Hosea chapter 2. And as I was reading through this chapter, there were a couple of things that uh, stood out to me. One, um, just devotionally, and the other in terms of, of, of some biblical teaching. First, the devotional thought. And the way I, I described it in my journal was I wrote this. Using God's blessings, using God's blessings to serve other gods or other idols. Um, as we talked about yesterday, Israel, the northern kingdom of Israel, Samaria, had been very unfaithful to God. They had cheated on God. It's pictured as Israel and God are in a marriage and Israel has been unfaithful, cheated on God with Baal and with those golden calves and other religions and idols as well. And um, it's, it's as though they, they had destroyed their marriage to the Lord. And he talks in your life, uh, use, I think he even uses the phrase gone after or ran, ran at, run after or chase after other, other lovers. And he makes it clear in this chapter they are going to be judged very severely. But the verses that spoke to me and out of which I get this idea of using God's blessings uh, to serve other idols or gods, a couple of verses, verse five, verse five in chapter two, for their mother has played the harlot. She who conceived them has acted shamefully, for she said, now he's referring to, to Israel. She said, I will, go, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. In other words, Israel, you, you are giving credit to all these other gods and idols you chase for all the blessings that you, you have in the north, the prosperity and, and the security, it, it, all, all the good things that you have, you're, you're crediting that to these other lovers you've been chasing, these false gods and false idols. Verse 8, look at verse 8. For she, Israel, does not know that it was I. God says she doesn't know that I am the one who gave her grain new wine and the oil and lavished on her silver and gold. They're crediting these other religions, idols, and so on. But God says, I'm the one who gave it to you, and, and, and you don't recognize that. Um, and he says at the end of verse 8, and you have I lavished this silver and gold, which they used for Baal. God, God says, the very blessings I gave them, they turned around and used in the worship of Baal and these pagan gods and idols. And for you and me today, 2000, 2023, it, it is easy for us to use the success and the blessings and the material things and, 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 and the opportunities and all the advantages we have that, that are gifts from God. It's easy for us to use those as the very reason we no longer put God first. God blesses us with resources. Maybe we have a house at the beach and a house at the mountain. We have the ability to vacation and travel. We, we have all the activities we want to, you know, our kids in sports and dance and, and travel ball and, and on and on I could go. And all of these gifts from God sometimes become the very thing that take us away from God. We would never say, oh, a pagan God gave me these things. We know God blesses us, but we get it in our mind that uh, these blessings, these advantages are so important. Guess what? They, 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 they sometimes, sometimes tempt us and lead us to live in such a way that we no longer have time to serve Jesus through the church. We no longer have time to consistently worship Jesus through the church. We no longer have time to, and to engage the word of God so we can encounter Jesus on a daily basis. The very things God has blessed us with become the very reasons we keep God kind of on the side and really don't make time for the things of God. In one sense, that's what they were doing. These other idols that we sometimes worship without even thinking we're worshiping them lead us to ignore God, take God for granted. So that's the devotional thought. Now, the teaching thought, the last half of chapter 2 looks to the future. 
not to the future restoration of Israel. So when you're reading these verses, don't get in your mind like the dispensational theology that God's going to restore all to Israel and it's going to be the dominant country in the world. No, this is not talking about the restoration of Israel. He's talking about the future coming kingdom of God. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, and he's talking about that. And then, remember yesterday in chapter 1, God said to the northern kingdom, I'm, you're no longer my people and I'm no longer your God? Well, Hosea picks up on that again. Uh, at verse 19, he says, I will betroth you to me forever. Yes, I will betroth you, you know, engage Mary, to, to me in righteousness and in justice and loving kindness and in compassion. I will, in verse 20, betroth you to me in faithfulness and then you will know the Lord. And I drop down to verse 23. And I will, show, I will sow her for myself in the land. I will also have compassion on her whom had not obtained compassion. And I will say to those who are not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. Talking about the future kingdom of God, the church, God's followers, the disciples of Jesus. I want you to listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 21, verse 43. Jesus is speaking to a Jewish, Jewish audience. And he says in verse 43 of Matthew 21, Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing the fruit of it. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says over in the book of Romans chapter 9, verses 25 and 26. Um, and he says also in Hosea, so Paul in Romans is going to quote what we just read in Hosea. And, and he says, I will call those who were not my people, my people. And her who was not beloved, beloved. And it shall, it shall be that in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, there they shall be called sons of the living God. When you read these chapters in Romans, he's talking about how God raised up a new people, i.e. the church, the followers of Jesus, disciples, Gentiles, not my people, will be my people. One more passage, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 10. Verse 10. And let's just back up to verse 9, a very well-known passage in verse 9 of 1 Peter 2 where he says, You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. Us, followers of Christ, the church, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Then the very next verse, verse 10. For you once were not a people. But now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. When Hosea is preaching, he probably didn't fully understand the future, the church, the kingdom of God, but God used him to preach looking forward, not to the restoration of Israel, but to the establishment of God's kingdom and his new people. So that's what Hosea is talking about there at the end of chapter 2. We'll keep making our way through the book of Hosea. I'll see you tomorrow as we look at the opening verses of chapter 3 and then the first 19 verses of chapter 4. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.